this is Kenny Dix for Viral. I'm being your host, Kenny Dix. Let me talk about why the XFL doomed from the start. Well, with Vince McMahon's declaration of restarting a defunct football league, the pressure is on. And how see the media people are talking about how this man was going to do it, but things just didn't work out. Speaking of that, join in the conversation using the hashtag Viral here on Connect, and thank you all for watching Viral. Let's get to why the XFL was doomed from the start. Well, Mr. McMahon, Vince McMahon, known as the chairman and CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment, decided to make a second attempt to bring back the football league known as the XFL and introduce ours to something new and different with this. Suspended all operations. We're finding out a little bit more as to why and what exactly happened. According to multiple reports, the league has filed for bankruptcy. The XFL is owned by WWE CEO and President Vince McMahon, and this was his second attempt at fielding a professional football league in the spring, but it has all gone wrong in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, according to the Athletics, Daniel Kaplan, the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing listed assets and liabilities in the range of $10 million to $50 million. The XFL was five weeks into its first season since 2001 before play was suspended due to COVID-19. Now, as we reported on Friday, former UTEP standout Winston Dimmel, who is a member of the Los Angeles Wildcats, had said that players were still getting their base salary checks, but those will no longer be coming in and the XFL will not return in 2021. I mean, it gave everybody another chance to uh, really get some film, really keep playing football, and, and just try to get back to the NFL. And, I mean, I think it was going great, and I know everybody was really enjoying it. NFL teams can't do physicals on us, and they can't bring us in to work us out. So I feel like that's the reason right now uh, not many people from the XFL have gotten signed or even looked at. I think once all this slows down um, and teams can start bringing us in for physicals and workouts, that – that a lot of us are going to get signed, and that's what I'm hoping for. You have to feel for Demel as well as his teammates and really players across the league as they are now all scrambling to figure out what's next. Sorry that Miss McMahon was trying to say during a um, little conference or something about bringing back the XFL and how it was going to be different from the first time than it is the second time. Well, things just didn't add up. It's the first time and the second time around didn't add up. Well, XFL was somewhat as a barter as ESPN and ABC and Fox and Fox Sports SPS1 were in agreement with XFL. They didn't pay the XFL money into to the league. They just let McMahon pay for the XFL himself, but they paid broadcast rights. Now McMahon had to terminate all his employees. It's just a whole litany of stuff. But the genesis of this started nearly 20 years ago when, in 2000, the XFL was born from Mr. McMahon and Dick Ebersol. Uh McMahon and Ebersol at the time felt the NFL was boring. It was missing something new, different. Um, it was giving fans what they wanted in football. Then they thought that the first season, which they thought was going to have a lot of obstacles, and it did have a lot of obstacles, where – Fans could know the difference between the XFL and the NFL. XFL was the one that was innovative with the over the head, over the sky football. Now the NFL uses it. Um, it was just, they wanted to make the XFL be different and new in the screen. It didn't turn out like that the first time around. It was more like a WWE product, like, like you had Mr. McMahon, The Rock, Stone Cold, and some of the personalities from WWE. And it just, the Raiders start plummeting down. Just, just didn't do it. Just didn't do it. But this time around, on the second attempt, they had a, a, a different feel. And the feel was, it was still sort of like the NFL in a way, with some players from the NFL, some weren't there. Well, um, it, it, was, it was just hard because you can tell – it was just on the last leg. It premiered after Super Bowl, and I guess now I see why the NFL is the premier league in football and sports. Um, this man had to shut his doors and file for bankruptcy. Now my man had a similar situation where his pet project failed again. Um, let's hear what you people had to say about the XFL. Take a look.
Alright guys, so the XFL, I think this is the final nail in the coffin, and I do not believe the XFL can come back amid some type of a miracle. The XFL is officially, officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So if you want real, real in-depth the numbers of what's going on, follow Darren Rovell on Twitter. He has every single tiny bit of information that you need on the specifics of how much people paid, all that stuff. One thing that, you know, you see lots of people comparing the XFL and the Alliance. Those are two, this is two totally different situations. The XFL would have kept going if not for the COVID-19 crisis. And the XFL, you have to give them props. They were able to pay off all their staff members. They were able to pay the players. I'm assuming that they paid the stadiums and the vendors, unlike the Alliance of American Football. So that is really good. And here's an official statement. Also, if you're watching and you work for the XFL and you need help getting your name out there, do not hesitate to contact. I can post stuff on my community, post stuff in videos. If you really need help finding a job, we are all here to help. You know, this is just a community that loves football and I'm sure there are people watching who would love to help you. If you need help, message me at the back end of my channel. But here is an official statement from the XFL. The XFL quickly captured the hearts and imagination of millions of people who love football. Unfortunately, as a new enterprise, we were not insulated from the harsh economic impacts and uncertainties caused by the COVID-19 crisis. Accordingly, we have filed a voluntary petition for relief under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. This is a heartbreaking time for many, including our passionate fans, players, and staff, and we are thankful to them, our television partners, and many Americans who rallied to the XFL for the love of football. The slogan of the XFL on the end of their probably final address to the public. Really hate to see stuff like this happen in a time like now, but we can't draw comparisons between the XFL and the Alliance of American Football. Two totally different situations. Really guys, you hate to see it. Let me know your favorite moment from the XFL season was. Thanks for watching the end zone. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment so we can move the chains. This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com. TMZ has reported that the XFL has officially filed for bankruptcy. They are saying they're doing this because they've lost tens of millions of dollars due to the coronavirus, which they are saying was a devastating financial blow to them, just like it has been to other businesses. A league spokesperson told TMZ, uh, the XFL, unfortunately, as a new enterprise, we're not insulated from the harsh economical impacts and uncertainty, uncertainty caused by the COVID-19 crisis. Accordingly, we have filed a voluntary position petition for relief under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. So supposedly Vince McMahon himself had invested about $300 million into this, but he's worth nearly $2 billion. Rest in peace. Update for all the um, sad XFL fans like myself out there. Chapter 11, bankruptcy. It is more than likely over, the XFL is, and we're, we're pretty much calling it now about 90 to 95%. There is a 90 to 95 there's a 90 to 95 percent chance that this league is now over. All of the money that was like you know siphoned from Alpha Entertainment and stuff like that will probably go back to Vince. Uh, he's probably going to need it anyway for WWE type stuff. Um, it's just a sad, sad time. Let me tell you. Um, not excited at all, you know. So, but what more can you say? It's probably over. It was a good run. Damn you, Corona. The XFL seems to be folded in half.
as in broken, as in done. Last week, we had the news break that they were suspending operation, and then that people were being furloughed and laid off, and then a staffer told ESPN, it's done. We no longer have jobs, and we had to have no expectation of coming back in 2021, which sucks, right, for a number of reasons. The first of which is, I hate that people are losing their jobs. I don't, I don't like that anybody's losing their job. I don't like that anybody is getting furloughed. And now we're approaching, my goodness, uh, 7 million people filed for unemployment benefits last week. And I hate that. So that's one. The second is, I want to spring football like you want to spring football. And it was not a, uh, a stupid thing to bet against spring football because nobody's achieved it. Nobody's made it work. Nobody has made it or made it work on television. Going back to the USFL and on and on and on it goes, right? The latest iteration of the XFL 2.0, where Vince McMahon was so intent on trying this again that he did a complete flip 180 from pro wrestling as football to football as football. And he had Oliver Luck going on television and radio to say, no, we are about football. We are a developmental league. We do not compete with the NFL. We want to give football fans a chance to watch football in the spring and make professional football a year-round sport that you can consume as opposed to turning, you know, the next eight months following the Super Bowl into, well, not eight months, six months into off-season central, right? And I enjoyed that. But again, it hit, it hit everybody. The virus stopped a lot of things, but the momentum for the XFL was also waning because at the beginning, they were getting about two and a half million viewers on average. By the end, is about half million, which is not a terrible number in the middle of your season. And I would have been really interested to see what it looks like when the playoffs picked up. But you also had a Dallas Renegades squad that you were putting a lot of marketing behind. It was my team, and it was obviously the team you're going to put a lot behind because Landry Jones is the first pick, and he goes to Dallas. And Bob Stoops is the head coach, and he's the GM and coach at Dallas. Now, in the filing of the bankruptcy, I find they're filing for Chapter 11. That means that the creditors are going to try to get paid, right? Or they're going to try to pay the, the creditors or come up with a reorganization plan, right? Not a bankruptcy lawyer. Feel like I need to say that. But in my understanding, Chapter 7 means we're just done, right? We're, we're not going to try to pay anybody. Nobody's getting any money. You liquidate all the assets right away. Chapter 11, you try to put forth a reorganization plan of some sort, and you try to function, but the, the court system, and I believe the creditors, have to sign off on whatever that plan is, and any plan that doesn't involve them getting paid what they're owed, they're probably not going to support. So in the case of Bob Stoops, who is owed a million dollars, I can't wait to see how this goes because it's not just him. Like you have some coaches that are owed uh, 500 to $600,000, right? And you have St. Louis sports commission who's owed some money and you got Houston who is owed some money. Lots of people have their hands out going to Vince McMahon as Vince McMahon also achieved making pro wrestling an essential business in the state of Florida. They went to court, they fought in court, and now they get to do it, put on their live shows at their facilities and at Full Sail University, for which I'm going, all right, man, pro wrestling is not an essential business. Let's, let's calm down on this. But he's not, right, because he's Vince McMahon. He did not get to be a billionaire by not being an apex predator and not trying, ways, trying to find ways to get around the system and to duck people who he owes money, right? by not throwing people out once he's done with them. I want to know that Bob Stoops got a little bit of money up front, maybe for doing some commercials or maybe even for like as a signing bonus, perhaps. But it ain't like Bob is, is hurting, right? Bob, Bob is not one of these people that is going to be without funds. It's other folks, right? Like my mom, she's hurt by this. Many of you know, I bought my parents season tickets to the XFL. And when it was first, hey, we're going to suspend it and we're going to come back next year. Do you want your money back or would you like to put money toward next year as a season ticket holder? My mom said, hey, can we do the next year thing? Because I enjoyed it. And I want to go back. It's like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, the money was already gone anyway, right? Now, everybody's going to get their money back. And for once, I'm like, man, 
I really wish my little piddly money could help with this, but it's not. And at a time when we needed some good news, there's some bad news. I do love, though, that this league gave players an opportunity to get back to the NFL, and many have, right? P.J. Walker, among them, played outstanding football for the Roughnecks, and that was enough, right? And I believe he was becoming a star. It was fun to see Cardell Jones running around making plays, right? It was fun to see Matt McGloin just dress down his coaches and become unglued as the New York Guardians were coming off the rails, right? It was fun to see Taylor Cornelius play pro football, even as I thought perhaps you should have been going with Quentin Flowers the whole time. Seeing Jim Zorn on a sideline was fun. There were some good moments from all of this. And I don't want to dunk on it because I enjoyed it. I liked it. I know that there are going to be a lot of folks who are going, why did you ever believe in this league? This league was never going to happen in the first place. It was not going to sustain itself. Vince McMahon was going to pull his money out. Yeah, all those things are probably true. Like, I didn't trust Vince McMahon to continue to see red in a ledger and throw money at it, no matter how much he claims to love the XFL. So now we all have the, oh yeah, we all have these 47 hats, their own, their own money. We have these XFL jerseys, if you bought one, which are going to be classic and relics. And this is the part I'm most excited about, right? I have an XFL hat in the studio at home. I have an XFL jersey in, well, I think it's in Laurel's closet. But anyway, it's got my last name on it. And it's got the one on it. And it's Dallas Renegades. So now I have a collector's item. It's going to be a lot of fun to just walk around with that on. People say, hey, you remember that league? I remember that league. And you know what? It was fun. Oh, sports fans, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today we're going to talk about the demise of the XFL. That's right. It's gone. Gone. Finito. So I'm glad I got my Defenders hat and my Defenders t-shirt and my Defenders coffee mug while I had a chance to. Right now, we're cleaning the grease fryer. We don't have any French fries today. Okay, uh, then just give me a small order of fries, please. Look, Chief, maybe you didn't hear me. I said we don't have any fries today, so how about something else? So, uh, yeah, it seems that the um, thing that's going around has uh, claimed another victim. In this case, a professional sports league so kind of uh it's kind of a bummer you know i was looking forward to seeing more xfl seasons and i really thought that the xfl had a chance to survive but apparently no it did not um so not under these circumstances i mean it may have uh you know, who knows what could have happened if uh, this whole, you know, worldwide pandemic thing hadn't happened. Um, it's not a guarantee that it would have survived, but uh, there were a lot of people that were very optimistic that they had done the right thing and they had the right mix and the league was playing at the right time and that everything was all set for the league to be a uh, a a viable long-term league but this really kind of put the damper on that um because they knew you know they a lot of the owner the team owners knew that they would be operating at a loss and they expected actually to operate at a loss for about three years but Um, They had a certain expectation, a certain projection of how much money that they would make this year. And when that expectation fell short by, you would have to expect at least 50%, 
that was just, uh, I guess that was a, uh, you know, that was a deal breaker. So, no more XFL. I'm kind of sad to see it go. I hope that maybe at some point in the future, uh, people will try another league uh, like that. I think the, you know, I think another league probably should should aim to be, should aim to start a little after the XFL actually started. I mean, I know that there's that gap right after the Super Bowl and before baseball starts where there's really only basketball and hockey going on. But I like the USFL setup where they played during the summer. They played football in the summertime. That gave them more time. They could have more games. In fact, they did. I think the USFL actually had 14 games. And they were able to have 14 games because they had the summer to play their season. They didn't have to play it in this little short time frame right after the Super Bowl and before baseball got really going. So um, I think that the next league, I hope to see another league, and I think it should model itself more on the USFL. USFL. Um, that, you know, it really could have been successful. Obviously, the USFL made its mistakes. And I uh, won't get political here, so I'm not going to go into why the USFL <laughs> failed. But if you know anything about the history, you know who the mastermind behind the failure of the USFL was. But I digress. I am hoping to see a, another iteration of some type of football league that plays in the offseason from football. I think that that would be interesting. I think fans want that. And I think that this could have been um, a league that could have lasted quite a while um, if um, it hadn't been for the, you know, worldwide pandemic. Um, because, you know, even the big leagues, like the major leagues and uh, the uh, and the NFL, if it extends, you know, into the fall, but like in, in the National Hockey League, even those well-established multi-billion dollar leagues are are going to hurt because of this real bad. So you got to figure a startup league that was just, just playing its inaugural season certainly wasn't going to be able to survive it. But what do you guys think? Did you like the XFL? Would you like to see another league like it? Um, do you think another league, do you think that a league could survive? Do you think the the uh, XFL could have survived if it hadn't been for the pandemic? I'd be interested to know what you guys think. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off. Well, the XFL will go down in history as, for the second time again, being bankrupt and filed Chapter 11. And now, this man has to shut his doors down and not give, you know, he has to pay when he can. I guess he, he'll, he'll easily pay them off and stuff and start all over again. He took his own money to fund the XFL and he said WWE wasn't involved in it. And now we found out in the file and shares that WWE was involved with a minority interest. And now the XFL is once again done. So I just let you know, if you know something is working for somebody else and you want to be MLA and be different, you need to think of something real quick and new, new and different, which I'm not knocking Mr. McMahon. It's just if the ex, if the NFL is that of a premier football league and people love the NFL with all those teams and McMahon was doing the same thing, just go to the NFL and just be an owner and just figure out a way. It said it was rumored that McMahon won the by the Minnesota Vikings. New York Jets at the time, but that didn't work out to the best. So, hey, you live, you learn. I hope the XFL, um, Mr. McMahon, lived and learned from his mistakes from the first time, not the second time. Well, 
I've been your host, Kendrick Dick, saying so long as we investigated why the XFL was doing from the start. Hey, you know how that go. Thank you all once again, and we'll see you later on, on Vow.